Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about space management. And for those of you who have attended uh, previous live streams or seen me on previous videos, know that I believe that the fundamentals of defensive driving and passing a road test is space management. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And we've had some comments prior to going on it live here at 6 o'clock. And uh, Eli contributed $2 for Super Chat, and I would like to thank him for that. Penny Penny is here. And uh, Basic Joomla Tutorials, my friend Tim. Uh, if any of you are looking to build websites, go over and see Tim there. And uh, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> giving me a hard time like the math teacher. What are your units? So uh, Silma Films is here. Hi there. Uh, Bricks for Wheels is the moderator. Bricks for Wheels is Corey. Corey is really good at getting up videos and other suggestions that I make about videos you should see if you have any questions about passing your road test. Hall phase is here. Renee passed his road test on Friday. Congratulations on passing your road test, Renee. That's really great. Uh, Kareen is here. I uh, wanted to know if we were driving. And Corey, thanks so much for that. I, I sent you an email, Corey, and I'll get you caught up here. You've just been like flat out busy with the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's been happening. Tara B is here. Blessed is here. Aloha. Uh, still enjoy watching your channel and videos, and that's really great. Blessed, thank you so much. How is the weather in Hawaii? Is it as hot in Hawaii as it is right now here? Uh, here in the Okanagan Valley, it's about 36 degrees Celsius. So just bear with me one second, and I'll pull up my... 36. What is 36? 36 is 97 degrees Fahrenheit. So is it that hot? <laughs> Arzina passed road test. Arzina, where did you pass your road test? And are you planning any uh, road trips to celebrate your success in passing your road test? That's really great. I'm awesome in yourself. So if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash free, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So you, if you have any questions at all about uh, passing a road test, starting a career as a truck or bus driver or anything defensive, then I can certainly help you with that. Ryan, how are you? Uh, that's awesome that you're here. Uh, Ryan, now, Ryan, I'm coming to Ontario at the end of August. Is that a possibility for you? Uh, Silma Films, uh, I'm a teen driver and have a question about driving I would like to have answered yet. Yeah, by all means, Silma, just put your question in there in the comments and I'll be more than happy to uh, see what I can give you. Arzina, you passed it in Canada. Which part of Canada did you pass it in, Arzina? Uh, Leone is here. How are you? So if you like the channel, consider subscribing as well. Give it a thumbs up and uh, share any information with your friends or other people who we can potentially help pass a road test, remain crash free, or learn how to drive. Givenchy, uh, tips for the highway two live streams ago and I passed my G in Ontario. Givenchy, that is awesome. So now you have a full license. That is stellar news, absolutely stellar. So it's 88 degrees in Oahu, in Oahu, Hawaii. Very sunny, beautiful outside. Yes, 88 is a little nicer than 97. Once it starts getting over that 90, <laughs> it's it's super hot. It's super hot here, and I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of renos the last week or so. So that's unfortunately why I've been away. So yes, going overseas to pass. There you go. Awesome. Uh, Arzina in Calgary, really great. Uh, Luddite. Uh, what is my doctorate in? My doctorate is in legal history and it is, for, for those of you who don't, may or may not know, legal history is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. And my expertise is particularly in policing, especially how policing uh, relates to traffic. And essentially what I looked at and what I studied was the transition from horse-drawn traffic to motor traffic at the beginning of the 20th century and used Melbourne, Australia as a case study. And during that period of time, average road speeds went from five miles an hour to 30 miles an hour, which is a 500% increase in road speeds, and which essentially a traffic revolution ensued as old highways were adapted to uh, motor cars. And I looked at how policing responded to uphold what the main task of policing is which is what's called order maintenance they're essentially social order on the streets and in public spaces and there was a conflict between 
allowing vehicles to go faster and upholding public maintenance and safety. And essentially what I argued was is that uh, all the laws that were implemented were really about facilitating higher road speeds. It wasn't about safety at all. It, there was some element of safety, but it was more about uh, it was more about facilitating high road speeds. And the other, there's some other ironies about that, but we can discuss that. So that's essentially my, my dissertation in a, in a nutshell. Selma, I'm very anxious when driving on the freeway and going above 65. Can't get the idea out of my mind. Uh, I'm seconds away. <laughs> I make a mistake. What can I do to feel more comfortable with freeways? Actually, Selma, maybe a little bit of information about freeways may give you, may alleviate some of that anxiety that you're feeling about driving at high speeds on, on freeways. Uh, freeways are actually some of the safest roads that you're going to drive on, contrary to popular belief. Uh, they're much safer than two-lane roads with uh, lanes of traffic in opposing directions because you eliminate the uh, risk of crossing over into the other lanes of traffic because often there's some sort of barrier that prevents you from crossing into other traffic. All the traffic's going the same way. There's no intersections. Uh, you're devoid of slow-moving vehicles, animals, and those types of things. So freeways tend to be much safer because traffic is traveling at a comparable speed. And yes, things do go wrong on freeways and whatnot, but for the most part, they're much safer because of all of the characteristics of interstates, highways, and or highways of freeways with traffic going in the same direction. So they're much safer. Uh, there you go. Uh, so know that, and as well, have a look at the video, and Corey will pull this up for you on fear and anxiety. Uh, surrounding driving and that way that will give you some tips and skills and strategies that you can put in place that will help you to alleviate some of that anxiety while you're driving all right there we go uh, so that's that Renee sub celebrated with my family thanks for all the support you're most welcome Renee anything we can help you to be successful and we're really great uh, really happy to have shared in your success and you've done the work and we just simply helped you out and showed you the door there so that's really awesome Arzina, you're most welcome. Penny, uh, turns on red lights. Can you explain in detail? There's no sign to allow to turns on red, but you allow to. You're allowed to. Yes, if there is, is Penny, if there's not a sign prohibiting right turns on a red light and you're not in a place in the world where you can't do that, there are some places, for example, uh, New York and the five boroughs, for example, if you're living in that area, you cannot turn right on a red light. So just know that as a general uh, area in which you can't do that. Quebec used to be like that, but they've changed the laws now. And the reason they changed the laws is because it contributes to congestion when people can't make right turns on red lights. But you simply come to a complete stop at the correct position, and most of these are going to be complex intersections. You're going to come to a complete stop before the stop line, check, make sure traffic, no other road users, no road users in your blind spot, so make sure you're shoulder checking on the right. And then after you've come to a complete stop at the correct position, creep up until you can see the intersection and see whether uh, it's clear and the way is and you can proceed and make sure that you signal early right so you get your right signal on obviously shoulder check uh, two times maybe again immediately before you turn and then you're going to be okay to do that now make sure you're looking for signs and those types of things so if you're practicing in a particular area in and around the licensing center make sure you do that and as well uh, do a practice driving test with a driving school. That way you're going to go out and it's money well spent and you'll be able to, um, you know, have the skills assessed specifically needed for passing your road test. And it, it, it guarantees a much higher success rate. Okay, so I, I encourage everyone who's watching the channel, maybe watching this on the replay, take a practice driving test with a local driving school because they're going to take you in and around the licensing center where you're going to take your tests. they're going to take you on the roads and they're going to test the specific nuanced information that you need to pass your road test in and around that licensing center i can't stress that enough for drivers taking a road test if you're not taking driving lessons then hire a driving school and go out for a practice driving test in some places they're very affordable okay Ryan, I will look and get back to you. Can you let me know the dates you're thinking of traveling here? Uh, yeah, Ryan, what I'll do is I'll just nip out here. Uh, let me see if I still got it up here. Yes, I do. So I'm flying in the 29th, Ryan, and I'm coming back on September 3rd. So if that might work for you, Ryan, uh, let me know. So yeah, um, but the 29th is not going to work because it's a red eye. So I'm going to be pretty pretty cooked on, on that day. But there we go. Uh, Kareen, no, I'm not in Toronto. I'm actually in Vernon, British Columbia. I'm on the West Coast. So 
Uh, Penny, you're most welcome. King, hello Rick. I'm having trouble positioning my foot on the gas pedal so it doesn't go so fast when I press it. Okay, King, uh, what kind of footwear are you wearing? What I would suggest is to wear trainers. If you're wearing uh, trainers, running shoes. Uh, if you're wearing heavy boots, that's going to make it much more difficult to press down on the throttle and control the pedal. So I always suggest that you wear running shoes and see if that'll work out for you, okay? Uh, Silma Film, uh, you're most welcome. Anything we can do to help you out? Yeah, <laughs> Kareen, sorry, I'm not there, so I can't help you out one-on-one. -on -one. But I, if you have any questions at all, by all means, you're here on the live feed. We can help you with that. Or uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down in the comment section. And again, for those of you watching on the replay, if you have any questions at all about success on passing your road test or any ideas that you might have, leave a comment. I try and get to them every day for people that have questions. It might take me two or three days because... Get the, the channel's getting pretty busy now and I'm doing my best to keep up so yeah just leave me that and like I said before I think I left this on the community tab if I don't get back to you right away and it's a pressing question send me a just post it again and I'll make sure that I get to it or send me an email rick at smartdrivetest.com and I'll get your question answered for you okay so because we want to help you be successful and try and get back to you as soon as possible um uh, <laughs> Selma film. Maybe it is safer, but I feel like people weren't meant to do 80 miles per hour in a metal coffin. No, you're absolutely true, Selma film. Uh, we are not designed to travel at high speeds in cars, but it is safer on freeways uh, as opposed to highways and those types of things. Uh, there is a lot less crashes that happen on highways and freeways and interstates, but as you said, you're traveling at a very high rate of speed, and if things do go wrong, unfortunately, they go wrong badly because of the high rates of speed but for the most part it's going to be safer so all right uh light eight here in florida practice testing even near actual road test areas is illegal uh no that's uh you you i did maybe i didn't explain that well luddite uh what i was saying in terms of practice tests is you go and hire a driving school and the driving school instructor will take you out for a mock road test. In other words, they'll do all the things, uh, get you to do all the maneuvers and skills and techniques that you are required for the purposes of doing a road test. So they basically do a mock road test. So the driving instructor pretends to be an examiner and they will take you out for 10 or 15 minutes. They'll do the actual test, get you to parallel park and do the two point reverse turns and other slow speed maneuvers that you need to do for the purposes of passing a road test. At the end of uh, that evaluation, they'll give you feedback on the skills and techniques that you need to improve to be successful on your road test. So uh, I know what you're saying about that Luddite, that you can't practice in and around the test centers because unfortunately some of the driving schools go there and it, it causes a lot of congestion in and around the testing centers during the week so they don't do that so yeah i know what you're saying kyle how are you kyle how is uh you're out of school for the summer are you working for the summer there kyle there in toronto kyle's going to university so kareen uh, my g2 is in september all i do is practice and imagine when i'm driving when i watch your channel it actually works the best awesome that's really great kareen you've got another month uh, to practice for your G2, so you're going to be really great. If you're practicing already and you're driving as much as you can, practicing the slow speed maneuvers and the skills that you need for being successful on a road test, you're going to be successful on a road test. All right, so hall phase. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, hall phase, the answer is way back at the beginning. No, I have been super busy this summer with another project that I'm working on, so I've I've been struggling just to keep up with comments on the channel and, and do the live feeds, but no, I haven't signed up for the Discord yet. So uh, I'll get back to that here and probably in the fall when I get back to getting back in front of my desk. Uh, Mr. G, I was told I have some neuropathy, but I do feel the pedals. I've developed a driving phobia as a result. I'm considering hand controls. I do practice driving with my feet around the neighborhood. Okay. Uh... What I would suggest, Mr. G, for that, if you have some, some sensitivity in your feet that's not allowing you to make correct uh, contact with the pedals, uh, what I would suggest to you uh, is get some really thin-soled shoes. Like maybe try flip-flops or something like that, or maybe even uh, a moccasin might work for you to get better feel 
for the pedals and Corey will get the video up here for you. Uh, have a look at uh, fear and anxiety with driving. That'll do some of that. We've already had a look at that. And But try the moccasins and sorry, not the fear and anxiety video. The learning to drive video is the one I was talking about. Go and get yourself some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons and work in the in the parking lot trying to get a feel for the pedals, the throttle and the brake and see how much you can push on it and those types of things and uh, get used to it and see if you can maybe get some moccasins to get better contact with the, the pedals and better feel with the, with the pedals and that should help you out. Uh, Kyle, so it's going good, not took a break this summer. That's awesome, you took a break. Yeah, sometimes we just need a break. I was taking some time off today, that's been really good. Okay, uh, you've been wearing walking shoes. Yep. Okay, Mr. G. So walking shoes. So I might even I might even suggest maybe something like a slipper or something like a uh, moccasin. See if that'll work for you as well to give you some more feel and uh, some tactile uh, sensation with the pedals and get a better sense of them. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, hall phase. I know it only takes ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to do that. It's the 10 minutes to set it up hall phase, but it's also I need to understand what I'm doing and why I'm there. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, hall phase, the hardest part about driving a normal car is seeing how far are you from the right. Yes, and hall phase, that is a really good point in terms of blind areas around your vehicle and judging that distance out to the right side of your vehicle. For those of us in North America, for those on the other side of the road in uh, Australia and Britain, it's going to be out to the left. That is the second biggest blind spot on your vehicle next to the one out behind you. So yes, it's difficult to judge that. And maybe what you might want to do haul phase is just go back to the parking lot with some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and revisit the fundamentals of driving and just see you know because if you drive into one of those pylons it's not going to be a big deal right but if you drive into the curb or you drive into another car or hit a road user because you misjudged that distance on that side of the vehicle it's better to do some practice with some pylons and that way you can figure out how far you are from that side of the roadway because where your vehicle is in space and place is an important skill and ability to have and it's not something that I can just say to you oh do this and do this it is something very much that is spatial relationships that are part of the right side of our brain. And you, it's, it's, it's an experiential thing. It's not something that you can, I can give you a set of formula for that. It's something that you have to do to figure that out. All right, uh, Ryan, I'm messaging you tomorrow. I'm traveling a bit this August, so I won't be sure uh, I'll be here. Okay, no, but that's great, Ryan. If it works out, that would be awesome. If not, that's, that's good too. Uh, Carol, I got my license in February and I still have anxiety behind the wheel. So, uh, yeah, Carol, if you're having some anxiety about that, uh, you know, that's normal. Know that that's normal. N just know that if you have some fear about it, uh, maybe you should draw, try and drive in some less traffic density areas. Uh, if you're driving in places that have um, known rush hours during the day maybe you could go into work a, a little bit later or go in a little bit sooner and that way you can avoid the rush hour and other traffic and those types of things because there is a lot of social pressure in the task of driving and we get pressured by other vehicles on the roadway because they're honking at us and they're expecting us to go on those types of things so that might be something that i would suggest that you could do uh, i have a fear to get on the highway but i drive in my local area so there you go uh yes and your fear Carol of driving on highways is well founded. Lots of people have that fear. Lots of people have a bit of trepidation about driving on highways and those types of things. So that's something that you can figure out and and do for sure. So uh, have a look at the video on fear and anxiety if you haven't already looked at that, Carol. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about space management here. I'll answer a couple more questions and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about space management and some of the things that you can do to be sure uh, that you remain crash free and that you do pass a road test because space management is one of the fundamental components of passing a road test uh, in, as well as the other three which are observation communication or sorry yeah observation communication space management and speed management and you have to have those four components in place regardless of where you're taking your road test in the world and what class of vehicle you're driving those four fundamental components are the same for every class of license uh, you're most, most welcome, Carol. 
Okay, and Mr. G, Crocs, yes, Crocs are good too, but they're still pretty thick, so I might suggest, uh, Mr. G, that you try some moccasins. If you've, if you've got some sensitivity issues with your feet, moccasins might work better for you. Okay, there we go. Uh, failed first road test, taking second road test tomorrow. Kayla, that's awesome that you're taking that tomorrow. Good luck on that. Kayla, let us know how it goes. How it goes. That's really great. <laughs> Hall phase, I should show you how to fight a traffic ticket. Uh, I can talk a little bit about that hall phase a little bit later if we don't run out of time here. Just remind me on that. Um, there are ways of, of traffic tickets. And actually, hall phase, I think that what we might be able to do on that is we could do a whole live stream on traffic tickets and what happens if you get a traffic ticket and you have to go to court and those types of things. I can give you some general parameters. It's going to be a little different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and in the states and whatnot. But we can give you some ideas about that. All right. Uh, for new drivers, expense drivers honk you up even if you do pass. Yeah, the speed limit, those types of things. Kareen, 8.25 in the morning. Other people, that not good, but my instructor told me that the earlier the better. How long is the road test? I wear flat running shoes. Uh, Kareen, yeah, 8.25 is going to work out for you. Um, I'm sorry, Kareen. Just remind me where you're taking your road test again. Okay, so space management, one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of space management is how close you pull up to other cars in traffic. So for example, you're coming up to an intersection, there's another vehicle already at the intersection waiting to proceed, whether the vehicle's turning or going straight or whatnot. I always tell people that one of the skills and abilities that you should hang on to from your road test is always stay back one vehicle length from the vehicle in front of you when you're stopped at an intersection. I am in vehicles with other drivers and after they get their license, they, they follow other people on the roadway, what other road users do. So very quickly within three months, most drivers are pulling right up to the back end of other vehicles. And what that does is it takes away your buffer of safety because maybe not three months from now, maybe not three years from now, maybe not 20 years from now, that buffer of safety is going to save you at some juncture because you're not right up against other vehicles. Maybe your brakes fail. Maybe there's ice on the road. You don't get stopped in those types of things. So one of the one of the skills that I would encourage you and counsel you to keep is to continue to stop back from the traffic in front of you one vehicle length because when you're right up on the bumper of other traffic and you're stopped in traffic and you're coming up to an intersection and you stop right behind them, Eventually, one day, it's not going to work out and you're going to rear-end that vehicle in front of you or you're going to get rear-ended and because you're right up against that vehicle in front of you, you're going to be driven into that vehicle. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of space management. I'll, I'll just answer a couple more questions here and then I'll come back to that idea of space management. Uh, North York, so you're in Toronto, Kareem. That's, that's really great. Okay, so you asked me a question here, 825. No, Kareen, I think that 825 is a good time to take your road test in Toronto. It won't be as busy and uh, you're pretty much past rush hour at that point. If there is still a bit of rush hour, it's less likely they're going to take you out onto the 427 and those types of things. So I think 825 is going to work out for you there. Okay. Um, yeah, VAST 90. Yeah, early morning is the best time to get a road test. And I, I would agree with VAST 90 there. Do it in the morning, get it over with, because you get up, you eat breakfast, you go and do your road test, and you're done. You're not sitting around all day going, hey, oh, my road test, right? You're chewing your fingernails. <laughs> so there you go. Samantha, hi, Samantha, how are you do? I've been busy on life, but yes, excellent. We've all been busy, Samantha, so that's really great. And just a plug here, if you're new to Smart Drive Test, consider subscribing. If you're watching on the replay, consider subscribing as well. If you like the videos, the questions and answers and those types of things, give it a thumbs up. We do appreciate that uh, very much so. And uh, lots and lots of people going for the road test this summer. Lots of people passing and telling us, and I do really appreciate you telling me. And uh, if you tell me where you're passing your road test in the world, I put you on the map of success and we have a big map of all the smart drivers that have been successful in the world and where they've been successful so that's really great as well uh kareen that's when school opens 
Uh, Korean, it's summertime, so there won't be much school going on. There might be a couple of summer schools, but for the most part, there's no, no school in the summertime. So you don't have to obey the school signs in the summertime unless there's a summer school sign, which I haven't seen any of those. So that may or may not be something that you're going to encounter there in North York. Uh, Samantha, I have a question. What if you get your driver's license at a different area and I'm still studying over the driver's license test? Thanks. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not following what your question is, Samantha. So you different area. Okay, so you've been studying somewhere else, and now so if, say for example you've been studying in Toronto, and now you've moved to Kitchener Waterloo, and you're going to take your test in Kitchener Waterloo. Is that is that sort of what you're asking me, Samantha? All right, Sebastian, I ever went to the dealer to have an oil check any recommendations on how to do it properly okay uh, Sebastian are you getting an oil check or are you getting an oil change on your vehicle because you need I, I'm not sure which one you're asking me uh, come visit us I need oil for my car oh, okay uh, do you okay you need oil for your car your oil is your <laughs> sorry Sebastian your vehicle is low on oil or you need an oil change Sebastian which of those are you asking me like you pulled the dipstick out and it's showing that it's it's not full. Is that what you're asking me? Because I can I can tell you how to how to do that. There's a couple of ways to do that. If your vehicle is low on oil, go to your owner's manual or open the hood and on the top where it says oil fill, it'll tell you what kind of oil. It'll be 5W30, 10W30. It'll be a specific type of oil that you need to put in your vehicle, and you can pick that oil up at Canadian Tire or any automotive shop. They'll have that oil for you. Okay. Uh, bricks for me, uh, Corey, uh, example for Manitoba handbook, Samantha, who must take a driver's test? You hold a license from outside Canada, the United States or other jurisdictions whose licenses are not exchangeable. Oh, okay. I see Corey. So Corey figured it out that you're from another area. You're from overseas. Yes, you will have to, if it, if it's not an exchange, some, jurisdictions you can simply exchange your license and they'll give you a license but other places you're gonna to have to take the road test again for example when I was in Australia I had to write the driver's knowledge test for car license and then I had to actually go and do a road test for tractor trailer so it's gonna depend on where you're coming from and where you're going to take uh, to take your driver's test so that's gonna depend on that okay there you go. Uh, yes, it's low. Okay, so I don't have an owner's manual. Okay, so Sebastian, there's a couple of places, one place it's going to be. Uh, if you open the hood on your car, on top of the oil filler cap, it will tell you what type of oil goes into the motor. It should say that right there. Uh, and uh, but, 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 but the other place is to look on the internet. Type in the year the make and the model of your vehicle and that will tell you what kind of oil. Otherwise, just go to the uh, one of the automotive parts places and you need oil for your vehicle, just go in and tell them what year it is and they'll they'll look up what kind of oil goes in your vehicle and they'll sell you the oil, okay? And that's gonna be cheaper for you because most of the time you're just gonna need a liter or a quart to go into it. So that's gonna work out for you, Sebastian, okay? Okay, I was asking questions I wasn't sure on the driver's license test. No, that's great, Samantha. If uh, I just wanted to clarify that I was answering the question that you actually wanted answered, which is what I was trying to do. So, yeah, okay. Hall phase, I was wondering if Corey can join you for a live stream. <laughs> we'll see if we can get Corey on here. Uh, Corey's, in, Corey's in Manitoba, so uh, yeah, we need to, we need to do that for sure. Because Corey's got some great information. He's really an awesome moderator here. So that's great. Okay. So we were talking earlier about space management. We were talking about not pulling up right up to vehicles when you're stopped in traffic at intersections and those types of things. Always leave one vehicle space between you and the vehicles in front of you. That's going to create a buffer of safety and leave you in, leave you with really good defensive posturing. The other thing, uh, when you leave space between you and other vehicles, when you're driving up and down the road, you should have a two to three second following distance. And the reason that we measure in time is because time is relative. And so the, the faster you travel, the wider that gap becomes. So this is why we measure in time. Now, people have said to me in the past in driving courses and those types of things, <laughs> 
is that whenever they leave space in front of their vehicle while they're driving through town or those types of things, people are going to pull in front of you. And yes, that's going to happen on rare occasion. But for the most part, what happens is that because those people are, those other drivers are traveling at a higher rate of speed, they're not going to be in front of you for very long. So basically all you do is, is they pull in front of you and then you just back off a little bit and they carry on with their life and you just regain your space around your vehicle. Because as I said again and again, space management is the fundamental component of staying safe while you're driving on the roadways because if you can manage space it's less likely that you're going to hit other road users other vehicles and other fixed objects along the roadway so keep good distance uh okay uh yeah so tim says that manitoba only has dial-up <laughs> most of us wouldn't even remember what dial-up internet is <laughs> but that is pretty funny uh, yes, so VAST90, yes, always keep a safe following distance. So that's the two things that I wanted to say about space management around your vehicle. Keep good space around your vehicle. And it's difficult to do that because everything in the environment of driving, all of the other drivers don't do that. And it's I've talked about this previously that you're going against the social norms of driving. You're not, you're staying back one vehicle length from other vehicles. Uh, you're not traveling at the flow of traffic because the flow of traffic always drives 10 to 15 kilometers an hour or 10 to 15 miles an hour faster than the posted speed limit. So everything in the driving environment tells you to do things that do not leave you in good defensive posturing positions. But again, stay back one vehicle length and always follow it two to three second length. You don't need to be right up behind the other vehicles because if you're right up behind the other vehicles, and it's winter time or fall or some other time or you're just not paying attention and the vehicles in front of you hit the brakes, you're gonna be right into that vehicle and you're not gonna have a buffer of space that's going to allow you to uh, stay back and not be involved in a collision with that car or with another car. And again, one other point that I'll make about space management is there's two ways out of an emergency situation. One way is to brake and the other way is to steer. And it's always, always faster to steer out of an emergency situation than it is to brake. And oftentimes you're not going to get your vehicle stopped before you collide with another road user, with another vehicle, or with a fixed object. But if you have space around your vehicle, you can simply drive out of an emergency situation and avoid being involved in a collision or a near-miss situation. So that's, those are some of the reasons that... I encourage you strongly to hang on to space management, to stay back one vehicle length, to have a two to three second following distance while you're driving up and down the roadways. And this goes back to the question earlier about driving at high speeds on freeways. If you can keep a three to five second following distance and you manage the space on both sides of your vehicle, those three sides, if you don't have vehicles around you on those three sides, you're going to be safer on highways and freeways and traveling at higher higher rates of speed because you have a buffer of space around your vehicle and if there's an emergency situation, you can simply drive out of that emergency situation. So I encourage you to manage space well around your vehicles and to try and go against the norm of what you see in the driving environment because everything in the driving environment tells you to stay as close as you can to other vehicles. We have this sort of herd mentality. If you watch vehicles on the roadway, they're always driving in clusters and you don't want to be driving in clusters. You want to be driving in the spaces between the clusters. So keep that in mind when you're driving and it's going to be a fundamental component for you to be successful in passing your road test, but hang on to those skills after you get your license and that's going to help you to remain crash free. So know that for the purposes of a road test and for the purposes of staying a smart professional driver. All right. So, we don't have too many more questions here. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think we're going to wrap it up early tonight because uh, unless people have more questions, then I'll be more than happy to answer those. But that was basically all I wanted to say about space management. We did have some good questions. And uh, like I said, if you're watching on the replay, consider subscribing. Give, it a, give the live stream a thumbs up there, and uh, we'll get that out for you. And... Uh, <laughs> Corey, we're getting fiber, fiber optic here in Manitoba. Yes, it is coming, and uh, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, I used to say that if we had the electricity shut off for six to eight weeks, we'd have the breakdown of social order. But now I'm beginning to think if we had the internet shut off 
for five to six weeks, we probably have the breakdown of social order. And uh, it was uh, somebody had brought up to me a couple. I think it was my mom that was talking to me about people's addiction to their smartphones. And actually, now it's becoming a newsworthy item that there are people out there who are uh, addicted to their smartphones. They can't put them down. So there we go. <laughs> All face. Don't wrap it up. Keep talking about driving. Uh, what, let's see what we can talk about about driving. Summer driving. Okay, let's talk a little bit about summing. Woot for fiber. Yes, uh, Tim, I actually, I absolutely agree about fiber optic. Uh, my internet, when I'm plugged in, when I'm hardwired into my modem, uh, I'm running 270 megabits per second, which is just like fiber optic is awesome. All right, so Hall Phase wants me to talk a little bit about more about driving. So a couple of things I'm going to talk about about summer driving because a lot of us going on trips and uh, we're going on holidays, we're going camping, we're doing lots of things uh, in that area. So one of the things that you can do uh, when you're out and you're traveling and you're navigating, and I will, I'll get Corey to put up the video for you on how to safely navigate because a lot of us are going to be looking for things, campsites and those types of things. The other thing is, is look for other vehicles that potentially could be lost. Most rental vehicles will have a sticker on the back that will identify the fact that they are actually rental vehicles. Uh, the other thing is, is that look for roof racks, look for any vehicles that are towing boats or recreational trailers. They could potentially be lost. Out of state or out of province license plates will also indicate that these vehicles could potentially be lost and driving unpredictably. And then finally, if the vehicle is packed, you know, floor to ceiling with all kinds of camping gear or rec gear or whatever else is in the vehicle. Uh, make sure that you're taking note of all of this and knowing that the person could potentially be uh, lost and will act unpredictably on the roadway. And again, you wanna manage your space around these vehicles so that you're not going to be involved in an emergency situation if they do some erratic lane change or exit off the freeway or those types of things, all right? All right, Jeff S A three eighty for pulling behind another vehicle. I was always told to leave enough room to pull around a stopped vehicle. Unrelated, any tips as to how far ahead to pull to alley dock? Uh, all right, yes, Jeff S A three eighty. That is another one of the reasons why you want to stop back a vehicle length is so that you can drive around the vehicle in front of you if it does break down. But there's lots of other reasons too. In case you get rear-ended, you're not gonna be driven into that vehicle in front of you. And while you're sitting there, it's defensive posturing because you can be looking in the rear view mirror. And if you see the vehicle coming up behind you too quickly and they're not gonna get stopped, you can simply pull ahead. And oftentimes, uh, just that bit of space in front of you will stop you from getting rear-ended. It's enough to get that vehicle stopped behind you. Okay? All right. Uh, Unrelated, any tips on how far ahead to pull to alley dock a 53 foot with sleeper? Uh, JFSA, ideally when you're backing up a truck and trailer and a tractor trailer unit, you wanna pull ahead far enough that you can get the unit in a straight line so that you can back up straight because it's easier to manipulate the, the unit when you're moving forward as opposed to backing up. So you wanna try and get far enough ahead that you can get the unit straight and then you can back straight up. That is the ideal. If you can't do that, then you wanna back around from the driver's side. That's the second ideal. And then of course, last but least is the blind side, but you're driving a sleeper, so you never wanna to have to do that. Hall phase, I haven't used my smartphone in for two days. <laughs> well, I can't say that hall phase because my YouTube channel is on my smartphone. And because one of the things that I do try to do is, is that when smart drivers tell me they passed the road test, I try to get back to them as soon as possible so it comes up on my phone. So I'm not fortunate enough to have my smartphone off for two days. Can't do that. Uh, Samantha, summer is stressful, but for me, fun too. Yes, lots of fun in the summertime. Um, blessed, when is a good time to drive? I'm driving slowly to get out there step by step. Uh, best time, blessed, is to drive early in the morning before rush hour. Uh, in the off peak times, so the off the peak times uh, would be any time people are going to work or coming home from work. So those are good times to do it. And uh, driving lessons by Big Mac Sam. Sam is there. If anybody has any questions about driving in New York, Sam works for Rookie Auto Driving School there in uh, Bronx in New York City. And as well, Sam also has his own 
YouTube channel. So have a look at the stuff that Sam's doing there and give him a thumbs up and give him support and subscribe to his channel because he's doing really great stuff there and it's really great to see his channel going. So awesome. There we go. Hall phase. What happens if a car rear ends you but the car who crashed into you has no insurance? Uh, hall phase, I'm not exactly sure of all of the ramifications of being rear-ended, but I would really encourage you not to be rear-ended by another vehicle. And again, what I've said is, is that you want one vehicle length in front of you, and while you're sitting there, <coughs> excuse me, you want to be looking in the center mirror and, and looking at that traffic coming up behind you, especially if there aren't any vehicles already behind you. You want to be looking at those vehicles coming up behind you and if they're not coming to a stop you want to pull ahead or pull out around the vehicle in front of you or tap your brakes so that you flash the brake lights there are ways to prevent being rear-ended uh, there are defensive techniques that you can put in place that will prevent that so have a look at that and all as well there's a video and Corey will get it up for you on uh, how to avoid being rear-ended so and Sam you are most welcome <laughs> for the uh, for the shout out there uh, you give me lots of support and, and encouragement over the years, the three years that Smart Drive Test has been up. So I, I really appreciate your support as well with the channel and those types of things. So summer driving. So have lots of fun with your summer driving as well. Uh, do take some time to make sure that your vehicle is safe and know that uh, you want to have good tire pressure. You want to make sure that all the fluid levels are up underneath the hood and you know do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle every month or so just to make sure that everything's working. All your lights are working, your windshield wipers are working, uh, all your fluid levels are topped up, you know, that there isn't any new damage to the vehicle, you know, pull everything out of the vehicle, give it a good clean, give it a coat of wax, those types of things. Uh, because if you get down somewhere, you just don't want it to break down because if it breaks down on the road and you have to get it towed and then you have to get it fixed somewhere at a shop. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was going down to Vancouver Island, the vehicle broke down. We had to have it towed for three and a half hours and it was just, you know, it was a lot of adventure <laughs> when the vehicle broke down on the side of the road. So I do encourage you do a pre-trip inspection because for a little bit of uh, preventative maintenance, uh, you can save yourself being, uh, you know, stranded on the side of the freeway, which is not a safe place to be. All right. Okay. 380. Uh, most insurance policies cover you under insured drivers. They s that said police or courts on behalf of your insurance company will do their best to get their money back. So there you go. Uh, however, saying that 380, and that's right, that your insurance company will cover the damages to your vehicle. It's again, it comes back to what I tell people about being involved in a crash. If you're involved in a crash, hopefully you're not injured. Hopefully you're not killed. There's the damage to your vehicle. There's dealing with bureaucracy, the overwhelming amount of work that you have to do to deal with bureaucracy and people who are in control of these insurance companies and those types of things. My experiences in the past, anytime I've dealt with an insurance company, I've usually had to get an, a lawyer involved because insurance companies are not forthcoming with giving you compensation. So know that as well, that if you are involved in a crash and you are involved with an insurance company, there may be lawyers involved. And of course, when there's lawyers involved, lawyers are expensive and they're going to take a good deal of whatever your claim may or may not be. So know that as well, that you want to, you want to try and prevent being involved in a crash because of the consequences of trying to get your vehicle fixed, try and get yourself fixed and those types of things. All right. Uh, Arzuna, there you go. Um, Hall phase, did you get the money some other way? Okay, hall phase, what I meant was if you found not at fault, but the other person have no insurance, what happens? Yeah, hall phase, what he's saying is, is that your insurance will cover whatever damages and those types of things. So Christopher's here from Washington State. Hi there, Christopher. Uh, you have any questions about your road tests and those types of things? And Arzerna, thanks for the tips and good luck. Good luck to you as well, Arzina. All the best. Thanks for tuning in to the live stream here. And yeah, so we've given you a few tips about those types of things. Again, if you're watching on the replay, consider subscribing, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be around for a few minutes after the live stream here and uh, we'll answer your questions. And thanks everybody for showing up. I appreciate all your questions and your time. Congratulations to everybody who's passed a road test in the last uh, week or so. Uh, that's really awesome that we can help in your success of passing a road test and 
Good luck to anybody who's got a road test coming up this week. Really appreciate it. Uh, good luck with that. And Christopher, it is, it is, is it allowed to enter intersection without blinking lights or is it bad or good? Thanks. Uh, blinking. I, I'm sorry, Christopher. I'm not sure what you're asking me in terms of Chris, uh, with uh, blinking lights, I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you talking about your turn signals? If you're not turning, what can you clarify that for me, Christopher? Please, I'll answer that for you. Uh, ammo work tomorrow is my test day. Uh, good luck on your test tomorrow. Be sure to let us know how, how it turns out. That'd be really great to hear about that. And where in the world are you taking your road test? So, I'll just stick around here for a couple of minutes, I'll answer your questions, but I'm going to wrap it up there. Congratulations to all those who passed in the last week on a road test and good luck to those who have one coming up. Be sure to stop by and let us know how your road test turns out and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.